So this sequence is, I will call this a, a purely simple restorative for uh, using when you're traveling or you don't have really any uh, amount of yoga props. So you can use um, a towels or blankets. You only really need necessarily one today. You can have a couple blocks. That might be the, the specific yoga prop and a belt or a sash. It doesn't have to be buckled. So we're going to focus on um, some ranges of breathing and the structure of breathing in the beginning because it's nice when you don't have a lot of props to kind of bring in your inner props, your muscles of inhalation and exhalation. So we'll take a block that's going to be positioned um, flat and it's going to be between your shoulder blades when you lie on it. So I'm, I'm mentioning that second blanket option because let's say this feels too bulky under your shoulder blades, like too much pressure. You could simply put a blanket across or a rolled up towel under your shoulder blades so it's a little softer. Okay, so I encourage you to lower down onto this block, but make it so it's let very little arching. So you're gonna kind of lean down and then find that block underneath the bulk of the back of your ribs, okay? So when you lower down on the blanket, you might sandwich this blanket up so it's slightly elevated, like it's a little more of a bulky blanket so that the neck has this nice blend of arching. Now you can notice that the block, even though it's flat, it's fairly intensive. So if you step your feet wide and you relax the toes in and the knees resting inwards, it's likely to be a little more soothing for all these arches in the bone structure. Okay, so once we're into this layer, Again, if it's too much pressure underneath your back, you can change it out for a rolled up towel or blanket is perfect. And move the elbows out like you have these gills that you're trying to express the motion. So you'll stretch out your elbows and then let your hands follow opening and resting your eyes back into the brain. So we begin following the movements of respiration with the experience of something underneath our breathing muscles since 70% of the lungs are in the back, upper lobes. So it might feel like a little strange to take that inhalation focused and feel like you can continue the breath for more than a few counts. It might be that it stops. You can't take a longer inhale because of the limitation of that flexibility of the lungs. But I wanna encourage you to explore the exhalation and really experiment with that length. Understanding that this beginning piece with the breathing might be about a three to four count inhale. and a four to five count exhale. Now steady the pace. Linger for the moments here and experience if that position of the body on the block is appropriate. It's often taught with a block at the second height, but to me, this is the most peaceful. So I'm not trying to win any breathing awards. So I'm gonna work with what seems complementary to settling into myself to begin. So I try to start with something where the muscles of respiration are cycling through to bring your emphasis into your structure of the ribs. Okay, now the feet can stay in this angle with the knees touching, but you could also explore moving the knees apart and then maybe even taking the feet close together and turn the knees out 
and the soles of the feet kind of scoot in. And this might be one where you have to actively limit the amount that the knees move down. So this is sometimes called butterfly pose, but let's try to keep it so you curtail it so that there is a little muscle engagement in the legs versus a flexibility driven experience, like you're trying to push them down. So find where you feel somewhat balanced with the feet touching, starting to stimulate that circulation in the adductors. And you know, maybe the legs move a little bit downwards. You don't need to stop them from moving. It's just we're not trying to overdo it, like press them down. And then we bring the knees to point back up. And what I'll have us do is just gently roll to the side. So you're coming off of that block or blanket and you're gonna put it over to the side and take the blanket behind you. And if it's rolled up a bit, you're gonna flatten it out quite a bit. So it's in a quarter fold. And then turn to your, <clears throat> onto the back and have a belt. And then as your knees are in this um, constructive rest position, Always a good shape to remind yourself to ease your back with your knees in constructive rest. I want you to gather that right leg in towards your core. So you kind of pull that leg in with the muscle bands that you're working with without gripping onto the leg. And then use just the belt, okay? So we're gonna take a belt under the right foot. And then as you lift up the right leg with that connection or coordination of the belt, you know, start to kind of place your awareness patterns in the lift of that right leg, the release down of the left leg, okay? And without wagging your tail, right? You wanna keep it very straight on. We're gonna take the belt together and hold it with the left hand. Now as that right heel is lifted, the flexing of the foot is being drawn further by holding onto the belt. I want you to stretch your right arm open and cross the right leg over straight across. So it's almost as if it's going over towards like nine o'clock to the left. So that might be an experience in your hip muscles. And instead of making it in the joints, so they're all kind of now complex um, residential area, right? They're all kind of in their own area, they're together, but I want you to work with feeling some muscularization of pushing into that belt with your right foot. Good. Send your right arm open, if it isn't already, and turn your head to the right. Push clearly into the belt. And visit the breathing now that it's starting to structurally shift downwards into the belly. And even feel like it expands the ribs to move. The, the block under our back had some purpose to in, kind of initiate symmetry in the breathing muscles, but now we're going to be kind of shifting from side to side. Okay, now we're gonna let that right leg position itself open. So you'll bring your right knee to bending, and then as you push up into the, the foot straight, slide the left foot in towards the seat, and then as your right leg moves out, feel right where the Back of the pelvis is still fairly even. It will come off of, it'll eventually come off of that even uh, tilt. So once that still starts to feel as if your right leg moves open, there's more weight on the right side of the back, then I want you to bring your left knee in towards your left side of your ribs and hold on to that leg with your left hand. And then try to keep that balance. Not about how far you push your right leg out, some days it's nice to work with these patterns and just keep it kind of simple range of motion work that's kind of lubricating to the joints and circulation is wise to the heart this way. 
to relaxing your eyes whenever possible. And get that feel of the left knee moving itself outwards, starts to bring balance to the sacrum. We'll keep this real simple timing. So bring that right leg back up, pull it back center, and then the left foot comes up into the belt. Stretch the feet apart in the belt so you're holding on. And of course, when you grasp to the belt and your feet are in a wide stance, can you flex them just as they are? And as you pull on the belt, let your elbows really relax as if they're almost to the ground. If you have that much slack on the belt, your elbows might touch down. And then feeling that relaxation of breath when the elbows are down. Okay, the legs might still be shaky again on this one. So if they're shaking, you can bend your knees. and slide the feet towards one another, but take that right foot out of the belt and then lift up your hands closer to the foot, holding the belt and let both hands hold that belt so that you can organize the connection in your back. Now kind of think if the left leg is lifted straight up, it's, not necessarily the fullest stretch you can get, like you could try to draw it towards your, your brain, but we're maintaining that comfortable posture in the hips. We'll see when we get to this next pose, huh? So move the belt uh, pieces right next to each other tightly and then hold the belt with your right hand and cross the left leg over and encourage when the leg is motioning to slow it down. So you don't miss any especially intense feelings through the upper port of the leg. And it might visit the hip, relax your right foot and feel that left leg. It could relax the foot, but you're still gonna feel quite a bit of priority in this left hip. You could have your left arm open on the ground, relax it. You could put that left hand on the left um, hip area and encourage that the leg is, is straight across. So it's going towards, you know, the three o'clock range. It's not trying to yank up higher. If mine looks higher than try to get it right in line. But it's, it generally feels like it's lower than, than you, you think, right, with the angle of the joint. So the right leg is relaxed. The left arm probably would be helpful if you open it and then roll your head to the left. You can close in the eyes. If you're in midair with that left foot, you might experiment with the navel center towards the sky, the chest turning left. So there's a twist. And then that helps the sacroiliac joint be very stable. We're not trying to pull around the sacrum here. Keep it stable in the joints. Okay. Helpful. And then the left knee. And as you move that left foot up, you're going to switch the hand on the belt and lower that right hand down maybe besides the leg. So you just kind of feel differences in moving the angles of the limbs. And then you start to move that left leg open. Slide the right foot in first, move the left leg out second. And then reach that right hand for the right leg and then grasp a hold of the knee once the leg agrees to come up and then motion. So these are all very subtle patterns and noticing you can do quite a bit internalizing in the muscles without a lot of props. Props are great, bolsters are great to work with and have the advantage of the circulation boost, but so is understanding just the movement skills and techniques 
B minus many props, you can do a lot of this with one or two items. And now the, the difference here is that the, the crux of it is I have this right knee out and it's likely you push it a little downwards, obviously it's not gonna pop, well, it's probably trying to pop up, but it's, it's instinctively you're moving it down on that right leg. The left leg may not be going as far over and down because you're using this pelvic basin to create balance. It's great to work with yourself on your back with all these kind of somewhat active patterns. Most of us when we're on our back are more so resting, but you can get quite deeply into the muscles and the joints and help them, you know, age, age their aging process, right? Um, hydrate that, those spaces. So when we come back up with the left leg, what I want you to do is take both of the feet up again and push the feet out. But this time, um, see if you can move your feet a little, just a titch forward. So you're prompting that the weight moves towards the lower base of the, uh, the SI joint area. So you might feel kind of the top piece of each leg connecting into the pelvis. So you might feel each hip bone. Okay, and then if the knees kind of are turning inwards, your emphasis now is to just turn the feet ever so slightly outwards, right? Like you're making this second position, kind of position with the, the heels in, the toes moving a little out, and then turn the feet back towards that parallel pattern. So you're moving in the actual hip joint, right? You're spinning the leg and you feel it connected right into the basically the socket, right? So you're just turning the, the feet out, okay? So now when you slide the feet together, I mean, maybe they pull back in the position they quote unquote ought to be in. We're gonna hold onto the belt and I'm gonna give you these, these, these couple options on getting up to the next set. So if you were going to do just a, you know, 10 minute back series, that could be what you work with. But we'll add on. So when you come up, you can either use this decent hold on the belt to bring yourself up to sitting. But if you feel like, oh, that's a bit much on my back, then you're back here and you bring your knees in, you roll to the side, and then you come up to sitting. Okay, but let's take a position minus any uh, anything under our seat, just our belt is under our feet and it still is remaining to be explored, the connection into the center. So we push forward and we hold on really firm with the handling of our belt. I want you to try to let the body get into a little bit of a piked position with the legs, but let yourself kind of gravitate towards leaning back. Even if there seems to be a little scoop in the back, so get a feel with your leaning back, and that's strengthening. And then if you pull a bit with your arms in towards the legs, bend the knees, a very heavy amount of knee bending here, okay? And then lower the heels to the floor, but hold on to the belt. So that prim and proper sitting tall. So climb the line of the spine, inhale, tall, and exhale. Lean back and lift up the feet. We'll do about four of those. So you lower the feet down now. Lift up tall. Inhale. Lean back. Exhale, push the feet up. Then you might find your own particular pattern with this breath. Lowering the heels, sitting tall. Leaning back. And then exhaling up. Okay. So play with that path of coordination with breathing. That's probably the big piece of this one is the coordination of breath with movement. So let's take one last time. This is good. We're doing lots of different sequencing. And so if you go through a little piece of it that you are yay or nay, you can just explore it for a few moments.
And then take off the belt and we'll move that aside. And then you'd want to take your blanket and slide it in. And then once you're on the blanket, you're going to swing the legs back. Well, the feet back. So position where your, your waist is going to be propelled this way. So I want you to turn your, um, your feet to the back space so that when you're situated on your blanket, you're going to move your arms so that they, they are different than the leg path. So my knees are a little wider than hips distance. You can have your blanket so it's in a quarter fold or you could have it so it's a bit uh, wider. Okay, so those are two options. Each are gonna change for the knee and the pelvis. Uh, this is a good height for the pelvis being naturally you know, lifted up into the core. You might do a little more core work with a higher blanket. So let's take our hands over to the left. So I want you to walk your hands on over both of the arms, reach out of the back and be ever so gentle how you're turning through the right rib cage. Okay, so you get a feel of your hands over towards the left. Okay. Bring your hands forwards and over towards the other side. And when you're moving through your rib heads, right? So you kind of feel these kind of bulky uh, balance in the ribs. And explore how the breathing is experienced in the rib cage. So maybe your head lowers. Maybe there's expansion through your ribs. Take the hands back forward. And here's where when we stretch our hands open, we lower our head down. And our hips don't have to move very far any direction. We want to feel that it's like it's a quarter dog pose, right? You don't have your knees up, but you are looking to the position of your head down. So if your hands are stretching forward and they're wide, so consider the expression of your back muscles. If it's a strain, um, then what you might try is a block under your head or a blanket, right? So if it feels like there's something not quite right for you in the position, has too much strain and you just put something under your head. Okay, now with that shape of reach, keep the arms really in that position forward, but lift up your head. You've got a block, move it aside. And we're gonna reach our rib cage down. So I want you to actually maybe scoot back a little on your blanket. So it does lift you a little bit, understandable. But when I lower down my rib cage and the front, the prone position, I'm going to slide the hands back and then work the shoulders back, lower my forehead down, but keep those shoulders in their motion back, even though there's a little drop forward with the weight of the shoulder. I want you to Try to strengthen those upper back planes of our body. So the muscles that get pretty slippery and loose, right? And kind of sag. So you're trying to move your elbows back. And I usually think of grasshopper when I do this shape. Um, it's not the name of the shape, but um, in the Sanskrit terms, but it just reminds me of that. So forehead down. Elbows back and then a little bit in towards your sides. Okay, keep it so simple that you're focusing on being a breathing machine. Okay, letting the body that's pushing into the floor feel the movement of respiration, strengthening. It's 
slow down the breath. Okay, try to get those shoulders to roll back. Okay, hands are gonna slide back a little more. And then when you push to come up, elbows by your sides and arms are trying to straighten. So I'm gonna scoot a little forward on my blanket so that I feel as much support under my knees. And then with this very deep strength, come back and cycle through it. So I want you to reach your hips back and round your back, cat shape, and then move your hips down and maybe bring your hands wide, turn fingers out and stretch your torso up with the lift of the brain. And then the brain goes down and everything tries to scoop through this time and loop that reach of the hips back. My hand stays still turned out, works for me. And now come on up and turn the finger so that the index finger points the most forward, your elbows bend, and you try your down dog pose with a strong bend of your elbows. Okay, so when you lift up, not that you're gonna be able to remain in that strong bend, you lift your knees off the ground, but notice that muscular pattern in your back. So I want you to walk out your, your pose. So pedal through the legs, good. And then feel how one knee at a time when it bends, the opposite calf is in a full reach, even if it doesn't get to the floor. And now when you move into this bending pattern, let's walk our hands back and walk our feet forward. And since we have a blanket, let's take our, um, our blocks, probably you might have to scurry and get them in front of you, but this is a good position to try that. And I want you to bring your toes up on your blanket or your towel and your heels off the back. So it's a, it's a little tilt, it's not very high but it's enough that we can work on our calves here. So you'll stretch the hands onto the two blocks and put them high up. Even if you're very flexible and you can touch the ground, I'd rather have your, your back be less in a rounded shape. So you'll have your blocks underneath as arm extenders. And then as the feet kind of mold into the blanket, right? They kind of spin a little bit. They're not necessarily perfectly lined. Your emphasis is to relax your top of your foot. Well, actually just the top part of your foot, which means the bottom as well. And then let your spine lower down, bend your knees if necessary, and let your head also relax. Hands could be in that reached angle, and you can also bring your blocks a little closer to your blanket and feel if that's better for you. For example, if you have a good range of motion, I'm not to say that India is not this is a bad range of motion, but if your range of motion is pretty fluid, you might end up with your elbows on the high block. And so there's less pressure in the shoulder blades, right? And some of us might prefer to hold our elbows anyway, and not work with the blocks for a few moments. So once you get the balance, and that's like step one is balance in the calves, and then up into the legs, into the pelvis, and then bordering on the circulation through the whole spine to the brainstem. Get your brain completely drain, drain, drain. Now notice what this is experiencing in your back of legs here. So as I bring the hands to the blocks, I'm then gonna step my feet back off the blanket. And then let's take a, a few moments to do some spinal rolls from the experience of the legs underneath you. 
So when you bring your hands to your knees and you might prop them up so they're just above the knees or like on your, your thigh. So you could feel your, your, your large muscle at the top of the leg or it slides down to the quad. But you know, position so your elbows are, are standard holding for your, your shoulders. And you're just gonna work with rounding your back, chin to chest, and arching the back, chest forward. So I would encourage you to really feel like your knees are bending, but not so much that it's hurting anything in the knee joint, but you're simply being a little curious about moving the spine and the pelvis in a free place where it's not being sat on. You're not sitting on your, in your seat. So it's different when you're standing, right? Than when you're on hands and knees or sitting down. So moving the pelvis, moving a sense of arching, fluid and then rounding and that's a little bit of a tuck but i'd rather have you move more with just simply trying to kind of scoop so you're not really trying to to completely tuck through the tail so fluid last one inhale arch exhale round come down all the way to hands reaching and walk them forward, but let's take, take it so that you get blocks under your hands and you step your right foot in front and the left foot is obviously, I hope, just behind you. Okay. It'll only have a couple options, right? It's either gonna step with the other foot or it's gonna stay back. So we have these two blocks that are probably in the second or the third setting. Settings are, um, balancing on each side right so we want to find that the knee on that right leg is starting to approach being above the ankle and then reach the left heel back keep it almost like there's symmetry that occurs from a very pure lunge pure lunging left knee is off the blanket left heel stretches behind you Okay. Can you let your spine find a, that elongation extending out of the back? So I'm lifting up my head a little bit. And then I might lower the back knee all the way to the blanket or just keep it a little bit off of the blanket to push back into the heel so it skims the surface. But if you decide to allow it to come down all the way, which I'm doing, um, you're going to let relax your left foot, the toes release in that arch. Now, it's not incorrect if your knee is a little forward of your ankle, but you probably will find some balance if your knee is just above, like some relaxation in your knee. And then lean back, same leg forward. You're just going into a reverse lunge. So you could do this without the back knee on the blanket, but you could be up and stretch and tilt brain down with the back knee up or the knee is down. And that may serve you well to have the knee on the blanket. And if it is so, can you let the weight of your hands find blocks positioned in a, in a reasonably help, helpful way? So right now my blocks are probably a little too um, up, high up for being able to relax into my shoulders. So I'm going to pivot them down, but we're all different with that range of motion. And instead of completely kind of dropping out of the block use, I'm going to use it so I can let my elbows move back and my head shifting without too much dedication to lifting up my neck. Just let it go. Breathe. Now feel when you move into a wide stance, you're gonna lunge, right leg, lift back leg, bring your block on the right hand in the inside of the right foot and then turn to your left. So you might be turning away from your view of the, the, the experience right now, but the simplicity is going to be um, all that it is, right? So my feet are in a wide stance. The feet are basically parallel. My hips lean back. 
And then I'm going to stretch my hands farther forward on the blocks. The blocks could be any height you would like. And then as you move into the sitting bones moving back, your brain moving downwards, this pretty intensely stretches the whole back surface lane of travel in my legs and into my pelvis and my upper back. So relax your head and neck, even nod your head side to side and let the feet find the way to follow the pose, whether they turn in, maybe they're perfectly parallel or you need to turn them in to keep that stature of balance. And legs are straight, so we're trying to lengthen them. If it's shaking, then bend the knees a little bit and reset the weight into your feet. So that could be a, an issue and you might slide your hands in a little bit to support some sense of control. Okay, now pitch the weight to the front of your foot or the roots of the toes. Not the root of your nose, but the root of your toes, okay? And then here as your weight is a little more balanced on the feet, I want you to reach your left hand for the right lower leg below the knee, and then actually bring the right hand to your back. It could be sacrum, it could be a little bit higher, but I want you to reach your right hand to your back and bend your left elbow and feel like you're actually rolling over into that right leg, but you're sensitive not to come to the ground, right? You wanna keep the legs in the same wide stance, but you're bending that left elbow and stretching a little deeper through that right leg. So your left leg is likely straight. Your right leg might try to bend, but again, try to work with the straight leg, strengthen around the knee joint. And then switch sides, keep it simple. You're already in that path of, to the legs. So you bring the right hand to the left leg below the knee and then bend the elbow and twist left hand to the back, but feel that twist through the torso. Mobilize the spine. And get a feel of your sitting bones backing up, head a little bit down. Now, as we come back and center, take the blocks. Figure moving to your right foot is on its own, trying to reorient yourself. It's like we're working with mapping the ways gravity moves to your body, right? That's kind of this practice, especially today. So when you take the change of lunge, um, you know, be a little buoyant, even if it's, you know, kind of stiff in the, in the joint. So, See if you can use a little bit of fluidity to stretch up into that right foot, then left foot down, right leg stretches back. It probably doesn't swing off of the joint, but it leans back into the foot. And again, it's a lunge we're working with. The left knee above the ankle, and you decide if you're gonna let the back knee lower to the ground, to the blanket. I want you to stay with what seems to be incremental and balancing the circulation in the top of the back thigh. So if putting the knee down helps you stretch your quadricep further, but if it hurts your knee, then you'll probably need to get your back knee up. And that puts a little more strength in your upper body, right? So there's some balance that comes to either of these choices and then lean back. So the toes up on the left foot, head lowers down to the left leg. Arms are really forwards. Uh, by now, maybe finding that the body is warming up from the practice, kind of in the circulation band of the legs. Let's take one more of these lunges. So left knee moves itself forward or does your knee do the movement or it's, it's probably coming from the pelvis that gets that rotation forward. 
So I think one thing that might help knees a little bit is um, just how you orient your pelvis through these poses today. So kind of notice to be really clean with the movement and very clear with its direction. So nothing too um, wacky, you know, simple minded motions. So when you move that left knee forward, you might go back to the reverse lunge when your knee is up from the blanket or down. And then just get a feel, do you have ability to move your hips back or is it your arms that do all the pushing? So maybe moving your hips a little side to side could enhance that circulation. So you gotta wag your tail a little bit more. That could be a little practice that you do. Moving through the pelvis. And then you just feel where that left foot, the toes have a position of motioning. So I could get the blocks up higher to position this. And you might be surprised if you have your back knee up when you try this, how it, it could be a little more agreeable for you, even though it's a little more muscles to get into this position, you might find that the back leg responds positively when the back knee is up, okay? A few more moments here with the lunges. Good work. So let that left foot lower for certain, the knee down, and then we'll take ourselves into a pigeon pose. Ah, very exciting. So let's find this with minimal props. So what we're gonna do is make sure you have your blanket below your back leg. And then when you reach down with your left foot, I'm gonna slide it back. So it's kind of hunkered under my armpit, which is, obviously going to stretch into my hip already, but when I walk my left foot over to the right, if this is a, a ability you have come into the pose this way, if it's not an ability, then you can basically sit down on your hip and then bring your left knee open and your foot back to the blanket. So I'm high up in this position, but I'm going to try to stretch my right leg back and come further down, okay? So what's happening with your your hip, right, and this knee open is probably going to feel like you're kind of a little cattywampus with your seat. So you can do a couple of things to balance that out. You can sit on a block. So if this is difficult and your back or just, it just doesn't feel very like, balanced, then I would sit up a little higher and then put a block underneath the left seat. So you really are positioned on that block mostly. It's really helping the lift. Now, of course, that puts you up and it doesn't allow you to relax as much. So you'll need another block. You'll need a couple of props. And you can lean into the block on its low height. That can work for some of us. If you don't use the block under your hip, that's okay. You can place the blocks both under your elbows. But it's not necessarily like you're a better poser if you're off of your block. You know, it depends on what's helpful to balance. Since it's kind of a hip scrubber, right? This is this is one where you can always refine it. You, you're probably always wondering when will this pose feel polished? So it's a continuous process in your hip. Now let that right leg stay back with the knee kind of encapsulated, basically. Um, so if I feel the knee kind of poke down, my work right now is to try to lift it up a little bit so it's kind of absorbed into the leg itself, the leg structure. So I have my top of my foot pressing, my knee is lifted a little bit. I mean, knees poke through. That's just what knees do. They, they poke out with the leg. That's their job. But try to streamline it so that you're getting some work in your lower back. You know, we're not bending the back knee to pull the foot in. We're keeping it the opposite. Okay. And then feel your weight. Lean to your left hip. So if you've got a block under, you're going to move it away. And then you're going to change the side. So we'll just do a simple change that will come to a seat, bring your right leg forward, crossing, 
And if you need to sit here for a moment and, and just find your sitting zone, you can come into the pose that way from finding sitting and then right leg forward, left leg back. And then motion down with the hip, kind of cantilever, motion the waist center, the belly button centered. And again, this might be one where you'll need, you can also use the, your other blanket or a towel under your right seat, which might be a little more comfortable than a block. You can also take the one blanket if you're just using one period to bulk it up under that right seat. But the left thigh is freely back. And this feels pretty balancing for the moment right now to have something underneath so that my hip is even, right? as much as I can tell with sensation. And the sensation might be your lower back is balancing. So feel the back in some ease with the arch. Breathing slow. Exhaling completely. Good. Give it a little bit longer to kind of work into the pores of the hip or the four hips, huh? Hip pores. You know, the farther back that right foot is, is likely going to make it more symmetrical, if you can call this one, any part of it symmetrical. Well, from the hips up, it could be. But if you Try to move that right foot higher up so it would be straight across, right, in line with the, the short mat's edge, right? You're not going to go all the way to the splits, but that's one of the versions instructed. But I'm trying to keep it more kind of classic, restorative for all levels. So I've kept the knee in that angle forward. No plans to bring the foot up in the future. So let the back knee, you know, notice how it's housed, housed in the leg. Because it is like you have two segments to your leg and then there's a knee stuck in the middle. It's, it's kind of like, it's an interesting evolution of the, just how it was set up, right? So it's kind of like already a challenge. But if the top of the foot, to press down and you can kind of lift that knee a little bit. The left foot is pushing, the knee is lifting, and my weight is a little deeper in the right seat at this point. So try to let that be a balance you explore, maybe not achieve. You know what's happening with your shoulders. We'll be on the back in a moment so we can kind of let the shoulders smush out again, but Many of these upper body holds, these are all upper body patterns that we're strengthening. You know, we have to find how can we, you know, kind of shrug our shoulders down so they're not tight anymore. Our trapezius muscle maybe clings quite a bit. It's pretty brick-like for most of us. So maybe nodding your head really safely, feeling it kind of turn to the left and right. On one side, you might have a lot of movement in your neck, and one, it might be just you feel the difference. You know what side turns easier. So level out that hip field. Lower the back knee safely. Let the knee poke through. And then as you figure a way to shift back to a seated position. So what I want you to work is to let the weight move into your right leg. So you kind of roll into the right thigh, yes? And then you bring the left leg forward. And then I've got all this stuff I'm kind of propped upon, so I'll move the blanket away that was underneath my hip. And then when you come up to sitting, let's take a position. In fact, what we're going to try for with our bridge pose today, I think, because I've been exploring this learning lately, 
is we'll take our blanket or towel and kind of widen that out so it's pretty, it's a big, a little bit more like a big square underneath you. That's going to be different, but we're going to try it. And if you decide, I don't like this blanket underneath, just slide it out. I think we should give it a chance because it's just been <clears throat> in so many little readings and, and texts and I'm just going to give it a chance. I generally try to stay with one situation I work with and, and maybe this will be an opportunity. So I've got the blanket under my seat. So that is true. And so if that's like your base with your blanket, you know that it's going to end up somewhere in your back. Everyone's different proportion. So some of us, it's higher than others. And you could reorient yourself on the blanket until you decide, okay, it hits my shoulder blades a little bit, just a tiny bit, so I can feel my breathing muscles there. It's a little, little interesting, okay? But it's flat, so it's really, I think, not a big deal really in your structure, but it feels funny sometimes. So my head could be on a blanket or not. It's totally up to you. Most people would use a blanket under their head for this, but the reality is it's it's a little intense on your neck, right? You're you're shrugging, you're you're pushing your chin forward and rounding your neck if you have that blanket all the time. So do what you want to do with that. Take your feet wide and then place a block between the knees, narrow. Just feel if you can kind of nudge it up to that leg spacing and make sure it's in a reasonable space um, center of the leg so that you can hold it with the leg muscles. So this might be a good one to not be staring at your legs so much, but just feel, go with feel like where your muscles can move in. Okay, so you might have the block so it's really right between the knee bones and it might be closer to between just the thigh bones. So farther uh, center towards the pelvis. To play with that, you can even turn the block so it points up. You choose. I just like it this way so I don't lose the block. Fully, I can feel the contact of it. Now, squeeze into that block and let the muscles in the legs, like they're kind of shrink wrapping around. Well, they might not be shrink wrapping, but they're kind of squeezing in some way. There's a squeeze. And then move your arms overhead and feel that reach behind you. Feel the natural tilt of the rib cage. And then as you lift up your hips, you're going to try to actually scoop the tailbone under. So it's, it's quite a masterful technique to really get right. It's like you can barely lift off when you get it right. If you're doing it right, you're not going to lift very much. And then when you lift up, Come yeah, on, just barely clearing the blanket now. Just there, just made it off the blanket. But I can feel my legs squeezing into the block. So that's great. That's mastering this. So as I mentioned, it's subtle. Some of this work is quite subtle, but proportionally helpful for the pelvic floor. So when you feel that lift, can you now lift your hips, right? You lifted your spine. Now you're going to lift your hips, so that's going to take another squeeze into the block and then an actual lift of the hip bones. Bring your arms towards the ceiling. We may not scrape the ceiling, but straight up. And then when you lower down, I want you to actually scoop under, but hold onto that block so you can't really bring your knees to your chest and then lower the spine easily. Yeah, it's a lot of work to get there, huh? Just that little movement cycle. So hands on the floor this time and palms down. And now scoop and feel like that cat spine that you work with in hands and knees. That you're going to scoop the tail and lift the tailbone. Squeeze the block. That's the constant rule here. And lift. You can do this also with one of those grippy balls. It, it might be easier because the texture of it is, is just softer on the skin. So when you lift up and you lift up, keep the lift. Okay, and now try to get your hips to lift and see if it feels easier when your arms go overhead. To get your hips up. Okay, so that's the work. And 
We don't have a belt to lift our hips up and down, which would be nice to have some sort of way to get up and down with complete support. But at this time in your life, you don't need a belt around your pelvis to get up and down and be moved around. So we'll do the work, right? While you can. So do the work. A lot of this is going to be pelvic control, um, opposite of prolapse. And so now as we bring the spine down, we're going to Try to lengthen the back down, all the touching to the blanket is important. And then move your hands as easy as you want, straight down beside your hips. Okay, bring your feet, lifting the heels up, then slide the feet in and then bring the knees in a little bit. Keep the block so that you point and it towards you. If you had it pivoted with the, the short end up, then turn it in so that's facing towards you. So your arms stretch open and your knees go side to side. And feel how the feet kind of hang off of the base of the leg. Anytime we can do that. If you want to add your blanket under your head now, the extra blanket, this would be a good time. Or keep it here. This is safe to do. If you have a real hunched back and you know that that cervical spine is starting to round a bit or you're getting shorter, this might be a good one to work with without a blanket because you're going to have to get taller and longer and it might take a little more effort and you'll feel it, but it's subtle enough that you could probably make it through with improving, you know, micro um, motions to get better. Now, when the knees go so simple, it's just side to side, we're jostling the pelvis. And I want us to get to legs up so the block is perfect. We can use that under the pelvis to get the legs to lift up into a full inversion. So we'll stop in the center. And then we'll move the block. And you know, feeling your knees are up right now, uh, in this moment, if you still have them up, OK? Now, to get your block under, you sort of need to get your feet on the floor, as far as I can imagine. It would be the proper way to kindfully get your spine up. Some, some might swing the knees back and then just kind of slide it under, but you have to go through that bridge pose to get the spine in this position. So push into your feet, lift up your hips, slide the flat block. Let's say you like to go a little higher and you know that. You know, you might try the flat block. And then maybe hold onto your hips and then feel how they tilt. And if you have, if it's kind of stuck, you know, trying to tilt them is stuck, then having that block higher, you don't really, it's not probably a good idea, right? So just do the best that you can with maybe the flat block. If it seems like it's not enough arch, then you put the block higher. So you're gonna lift up both legs with your back of your pelvis on a block. And then once you arrive, let the spine, especially up at the neck base, brain, relax into that length. You are trying to let your weight of your head relax into the floor, right? So, you know, just think of it. If I had a blanket there, it's going to push my neck up, and it's probably the opposite you want. If you could have anything, you probably have something in your floor that you had to go back through, but that's probably not a prop you set up here today. <laughs> so the legs are in that lift without any, anything on them, right? No belt. If they shake, you can put a belt around the legs to hold them together. And then separate the feet ever so small separation. Relax the feet in neutral. You might wiggle your toes and then feel your shoulders moving open and the elbows wide and the hands back in cactus pose. You will probably feel like a cactus today. Outside warm. So, you know, feel where the arch is landing in your tail. And then let the belly relax with the breath. So not a swift breath, but a slow cycle to stimulate the breathing rhythm. And it's a real different dynamic than when you're on any other position. 
that when your pelvis is lifted and you're in an inversion, it certainly brings you into a coolness inside the body. It's, it's a little cooling of a pose, but also calming. If the feet are trying to get farther apart, see if you can keep it in that relative neutral state with the feet straight up, not swinging them back. Great. Yes, if the knees need to bend, let them bend a bit. The emphasis is that you're up on the block. That's the key. And now with the belly, breathing. Focusing on breathing in through your nose so that you can use your, your nose as your greatest filter and humidifier. So it's a good place in the body to take good care of your nose. And use that for most of your breathing. All your inhales. Now, as we bend through the knees and we lower down feet, you might be moving your arms to kind of help out, but feel what it's like when you're independent in your lower bones than your uppers, or kind of feel when you can give each of them a job to do. And let them be accountable and work to their best so that you're not kind of codependent, right? I know the upper and lower body really help each other out amazingly. So when my lower body's working right now, I'm gonna walk my feet with my heels a little bit up in towards my seat, and then lift up the hips. You probably need hands to slide the block out. <laughs> and then once you lower the spine down, uh, then you can take that right leg and cross it over the left leg. Okay, so I'm gonna encourage you to, to walk your feet over to the uh, right side of your mat, and then you're going to let the knees ro rotate over towards the left. So it's a simple supine twist. This is where you might start making some changes with your props. So you might use a block over onto that left side under the leg, right? The under the, the stack of legs so that you have support. Maybe the block is low and you kind of nudge it in under. But it's up to you with your right arm if it goes straight back or if it goes straight open. It seems like it's richer, right, when it goes straight back, but that might pull things in your shoulders that doesn't that shoulder doesn't need. So find an offering of movement that's comfortable and then roll your head to the right. Remember, you can add your blanket anytime, especially during these poses, once that we're in this shape. Up to you. And you also don't have to have this blanket under your pelvis anymore. So if that feels like it's adding too much intensity, then you take it out. Okay, now feel when your knees come back center. You'll take the right foot up to the left knee, so that right knee hinges open in figure four. And be kind to that left side spine, right? So it's been turned a little bit, right? So now when we bring the legs into the chest, we grab a hold of the back of the left leg, and we find a placement of the hands interlaced underneath that leg, behind the leg. And we move the legs towards us, but you might find that holding below the knee feels good. You know, it's a little bit of a balance with the legs stretching straight up. Yeah, and also decide right now if you feel like, well, I think I want that blanket or something under my head now. This is a good time to start adding those comforts especially if the blanket's really flat option. 
not a better poser if you don't have a blanket, but there's a time, a, a time and a place for the add-ons. So when you hold the back of that leg, move it towards you. you don't, don't just hold the leg and kind of as if you just showing that you have a leg that's held, but you're actually doing something with the muscles. Pulling. Great. So we're sealing in the back. It's kind of like sealing um, from the last pose, right? Kind of patching it together. So we put it in a vulnerable place and then we try to work along the joint and then we come back and seal it. Okay, so here we're gonna uncross and I want you to windshield wipe for the legs. So just let the feet come down as wide as your mat is important, I think. And then let the knees shift from side to side. And this whole sequence is specific, each thing we're working through. So if the placement seems a little bit off, then, you know, write a note. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see kind of where it feels like that for you and try to make sense of that. So as the knees move side to side, working to that calibrating from right to left, you're gonna have to work with two different sides all the time. So we're probably not exactly the same in measurements either. Okay, so once you go slow with this one, and then you come back into the center, you're gonna take the right foot. Now you might start with feeling your back pretty balanced with your feet under the knees. They might not be right under your knees, but your aim is to kind of keep it like that. And then the left leg lifts and crosses over the right. Now, if my knees are apart when I do the crossing like that, when I cross, I'm probably pulling my right leg into the midline. So it might be good for you to walk your feet towards each other and then you're gonna take that crossing. Otherwise it's gonna pull the hip, not displace it, but anything safer is better. It will work with here. So crossing over, let the knees move to the, or the whole bone structure, as it wraps around that right leg, the left leg crosses the right leg, wraps around and then swings the hip to stretch over to the right. Perfect. So. You could use a block underneath the leg. If that's too much height, then that's not going to work, right? So you don't want to put something to the leg that's going to bring it back to, to a less stretched position. So find what works for you, block or no block. And truly feel circulation design through the hip. Yeah, if your tendency is to kind of use the weight of the leg to use like the body weight and gravity to try to get more, you might try to get that left arm to stretch open or a little bit back. Let that whole arm to the rib cage play out versus trying to push the leg down. So, you know, it's important to find this whole balance, this counter pose this spiraling open counter spin of the left side to the right side. Or actually, the no, left side all the way down to the left. It isn't two sides right now, it's all left. Okay. So let the mind um, scan the left side to the stay, left side down to the hip. Now, when you come into that reclining figure four pose, some people call it reclining pigeon. You might start out the side by putting your left hand to that kind of left side of the back. Now this quadratus lumborum named muscle here, um, it's a breathing muscle too. It's more of the um, muscles of exhalation. So it's fun to learn about some of these different muscles, inhalation, exhalation. And so when you bring your body back in towards center, slide the left foot to the right knee, and then take care that this left side of the back is softening. 
relaxing. You're not trying to grip it. So when you exhale, you want that to soften. And then move the knees in towards you. So hold on to the back of that right leg. Moving the legs towards you, inwards. Right leg could swing up. Or it could stay bending. Some might get more out of holding below the knee. It cranks on the leg deeper, but if you have anything, if you are going to live a lifetime with some stuff with your knee for whatever reason it happened to you, I don't think it's a good idea to pull around the knee joint and cramp it in, but some people seem to get by without anything in the knee. <laughs> somewhere else. Something will happen. So pull so that that left hip is feeling some dose of circulation. Pull. You pull on the leg in. And when that left foot is in that position, if the ankle looks a little bit kind of, it's curved a lot, but it's not like you're flexing your foot the whole time, it's okay. You know, you want to feel this movement dialogue of your ankle joint as well. It just doesn't get a lot of that during the day. It's kind of, it's straight under you. It's pushed into a box and you know, the foot is pushed into a box most of the time. So just let the, the ankle have its time to move around when it feels like it. You'll know if it's not right, if it feels like it's getting pulled the wrong direction. Right leg could swing up. Good circle your foot. And then when we get a feel here, getting to these final moments. Um, but I want us to kind of blend our focus towards is that we've done a pretty reasonable hip research here. So when we're moving into this pose, that is these moving these two parts of the you know, the legs have moved in pigeon and this pose and variations with the knee moving out um, and the feet in. When we lower down that right leg now, you know, kind of notice the left knee open. Just kind of feel what that's like through the leg as a sensation of the leg. And maybe you can only feel the sensation by the, the hip awareness because the hip is is kind of intricately tied into this position. And now you find where your blocks are and slide them in because they're going to be kind of your helpers here. And you're going to uncross the left foot and then tuck the blocks in so they're, my feet are about hips distance right this moment. Knees, po knees poking up, okay? And then I'll put my blocks right next to my hip sides. Um, and when you move your knees out, you know, I want you to squeeze those blocks in so you're not letting the legs kind of move them out. Keep the blocks fixed so they're kind of box, boxing you in. And then bring your feet together and slide them down. And I know this is going to likely feel like it's poking a little bit. There's a little bit of pokiness. And oh, sure, you could change your block. You could, you could turn it and tilt it and all those comfortable things that you could do. But Slide your feet down right now instead of trying to get change the block uh, proportion to your leg. And then let that kind of instill into your hip. It likely feels like it kind of, it doesn't burn, but it does feel like there's some positional pressure into that area of the hip. Now, if you slide your feet up higher towards the groins, it could poke in a different place and not feel as good. So that's why sliding down is a good idea. And let's say you're comfortable with your knees in this shape and you want to slide your blocks a little farther down underneath the knees instead of the right next to the hips. You can now move your blocks a little bit farther out, down and out. So they're holding the leg bones up. So mine is a little bit by my side of my outer thigh, my abductor, and then it's not even touching my leg and part of the block because my leg doesn't go that far. So it's just the way it is. Just holds the part it holds. So notice when you touch with your hands on the block, it's if they are pretty symmetrical as far as you can tell your value. 
that connection. And then take a belt and you leave the legs the way they are. If they can't stand this, then you go let them stretch all the way down. Anytime you can back up, back off of this pose. And then just take the belt so you hold it overhead. And as you reach your hands out wide on the belt, let your arm bones center. And the blanket is pretty nice for this, reasonably helpful. So the hands hold on to that belt. And I'm giving myself some real generous width with holding on to the belt. Eyes closed. Come back to the breath, inhalation, and exhalation. Keeping that sensation of the movement of the breath vital to your scanning. So you'll feel that in your core threads. And then let the muscle engagement in the hips and the legs be supported by the breath, the letting go. Head can nod from side to side. If it's a strain on your shoulders, let go of the belt. That means if it's any kind of strain, like if it's more than muscle and pulling, then you let go of it. And give a few moments here, rocking the head side to side. And then maybe you let your head come back to center. Or maybe it's good just to keep going side to side with your neck. Swallow to clear the throat. And come back in center. Relax the grip on the belt, let go. Put your hands be either a little lower and then that proportion is different in the shoulder and the arms. Completely, or you can let the hands rest on your core, maybe one hand on just below the sternum and a little bit below the ribs, and the other hand just below that hand, and then coordinate the breath, the breath, the best breath, the best breath. So that inhale, that inhalation muscle is the diaphragm here, and then the exhalation the sides of the waist. You know, but muscles of inhalation are also your pectoral muscles, your chest muscles. And that's because we, we tend to do so much breath force in the upper chest. So if there's anything you might take away is a little bit more of that thoracic, diaphragmatic, they might call it thoracodiaphragmatic breathing, but this lower basin and get it out of the chest so that your only inhalation muscle focus is lower than the ribs. And then the only upper muscle or area is not muscle, it's the nose, right? Instead of tightening up the chest, let your breath move comfortably and exit freely. Comfortably in, exit freely. And now as you move your knees back up to this, pointing, poking up, start to slide your feet towards your seat. And position your knees so that when they are moving towards your rib cage, you'll feel like you're going to feel when you walk, right? You have to swing a leg forward all the time. So try to swing a knee in. And then, I mean, you might use your arms when you're walking, right? You're using them to balance your structure, but you know, feel what your uses of your arms here, because if your belly feels like it really tightens to bring your knee in, your opposite knee, you might be better with your hands on the ground. So kind of notice where do you use your muscles to bring your knees in? Not that it's bad to tighten the core, but find what's comfortable in your back as well. And then just hug the legs in. We'll take a moment here 
the legs being held in towards the chest. You can hug onto the back of the legs. You can separate the knees and then rock side to side. Yeah, how simple this was, this class, right? We just used a few props and that's a reasonable movement in the, in the body. Yeah, so roll to a side and let your hands help you come up. You can use them sometimes. And get a feel here when you have the spine seated up out of the pelvis, you might get a feel of the coordination of your hips into the legs and then in your hips up into your ribs and bring your hands to each other and lift up the arms. Okay, try to feel where the arms lift the ribs and the ribs lift up out of the waistband, kind of wriggle. It's a good one to get some wriggling. Wriggle room. Feel where the arms have that.